Welcome to Buckets at WNBA, Action Network's WNBA betting podcast presented by BetMGM, the king of sportsbooks. I'm your host, Joe Delera, and I'm joined by Brian Fonseca. This is your women's Olympic basketball betting preview for the 2024 Summer Olympics in Paris, France. Brian and I are going to give out some of our favorite bets and talk about where we're seeing value in these Olympic Games and when we're where we're waiting to see some value in these Olympic Games. We also have an episode focused on the men's teams that's out right now on buckets so you can check that out as well before we get into our best bets the WNBA all-star game happened so we got to talk about how team WNBA beat team USA uh they they beat them pretty good too you know they were led by Caitlin Clark who there was a lot of talk about why she wasn't on the Olympic team or what the situation was Brian Quickly, should we be concerned about Team USA? Does this matter, or was that just like that was their toughest test in general? They were really led by Enrique and Gumbawale. Uh, Fair. Somebody <laughs> here, somebody on this show had Enrique and Gumbawale getting 20 plus points at plus money uh, before the All Star game. I should have laddered that. I should have did the Joe Valera <laughs> just go up to 25 and 30 because Jesus Christ, like, Enrique had like, I think, 34 and eight threes. Um, So they did this once before in 2021, before the last Olympics, and Team WNBA won 93 to 85 um, against Team USA in that one as well. And Team USA ended up smacking everybody in the Olympics. Um, Coincidentally, Enrique Gumbawale was the MVP of that game. So they keep leaving her off and she keeps making them like, you know, feel bad about it and just bust their ass in the All-Star game. (laughs) Maybe they should just put her on one of these teams. By the way, she was the biggest snub. Uh, on this team or who didn't make the team uh, before even Kaylin Clark because of the resume, the experience and how long she's been doing it. Kaylin Clark, you know, struggled from the field, but did have 10 assists and only two turnovers. So very good on her part in terms of setting the table. Felt like that's how that game was going to go. So I don't have large concerns or anything like that. I do wonder um, like what their lineup is going to be because they did decide to have a starting lineup of Chelsea Gray, <clears throat> Excuse me, Chelsea Gray, Jewel Lloyd, Diana Taurasi, Brianna Stewart, Asia Wilson. I think that starting lineup is fine. I think there's probably a better one out there, but they're so much better. Like this is this is what people think Team USA men are. The women's team is actually yeah. so much better than their field. They're minus 1,800 to win the gold medal right now in a tournament of 12 teams. <laughs> minus 1,800 is pretty insane. insane. <laughs> you know, so I, I, like they're just that good. So to me, it's not it's not worrisome. I think if Team WNBA was in the Olympics, they'd probably win the gold medal also. Yeah, I, I think that the the W like this team is just absolutely dynamic. Um, and even though they didn't really show up in obviously the All Star game, I think that's kind of one of those things. It's like one team saying like, you know, we feel like maybe we're a little snub. We feel like we're a little bit slighted. Like we're going to go out there and put out our best foot as well. But like at the end of the day, all these all these women they were all All Stars. And to avoid any to avoid any blowback with the Arike kind of thing, I know. Arike, she said that she withdrew herself from consideration, but she said it was based on the vibes because she was like, I didn't feel like I was getting picked. Yeah. And Team USA, I'll tell you what, they didn't go after her and say like, no, 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 you're good. You're good. You're good. Like, keep uh-huh. staying in with this process. That's not uh-huh. what happened. So, um, you know, just to clarify if there were any kind of concerns there. But I think that you're right. At the end of the day, what team usa has from the women's perspective is what like the the dominance that the men's team really kind of used to have i think um where you'd go in it's like it doesn't even you don't even have to think about it like set it and forget it like if you want to bet a minus 1800 like like they're probably gonna win <laughs> but like i'm just i'm not we're not gonna yeah. go out here and we're not we're not trying to make a habit of going out here recommending minus 1800 bets like it's just it's not you know that's not what we're trying to do we're trying to find a little bit of value here for you guys so when we look at this at I, I think there's a couple of different ways that you can actually back and bet on Team USA. And that leads us actually to what our favorite bets for the women's brackets is, are. Uh, Brian, what's your favorite outright for the women's bracket overall? This is one that we both, we, we were like, thank God this hit right before we started. <laughs> yeah. Asia out. Wilson. Yes. Asia Wilson to lead Team USA in scoring at plus 275. Juicy number. Um, we love this bet. And Brianna Stewart was second at plus 325 for good reason, you know, reasonably close. But 
AJ Wilson led Team USA in scoring in the World Cup a couple years ago and led them in scoring, tied with Brittany Griner, but led them in scoring in the last Olympics as well. Brittany Griner is more than likely coming off the bench for this team, as we saw as indication by, you know, the All-Star game, but also at the stage of her career that she's at. She probably doesn't need to be starting at this point anyway. Asia Wilson is just the best player on the best team who is going to be relied on in crunch time and from those other international competitions. This is a big thing even this year, and she's looking like she's going to win MVP again in the WNBA. She's continuing to add to her game. The toolbox is getting a little bit deeper. The range is getting a little bit longer. Like Asia Wilson is just a monster, and I think that she should lead this team in scoring, so this is the bet that we like the most. Yeah, and I think I, I'm with this too. Uh, I love this bet. And part of why I settled on Asia as opposed to Stewart was when we looked at back a little bit, and obviously things changed. So, but when you looked at the last two, time these players were playing together on the international stage, right? Asia had a significantly higher floor. She scored at least 14 points in every single game of that tournament, of that international tournament. Whereas if we looked at Stewart, she had a couple games at two. She had one game at two, another game at eight, another game at nine, another game at 11. So there's a little bit more variability, even though she had a higher ceiling with a 22 point game. When additionally, like when we look at Asia, Asia has gotten so much better. I feel like it's it's crazy to even say that, right? Um, but the leap that she's taken even from even like last year is incredible. Last year, she averaged 22.8 points per game. The season before that, she was at 19.5. This year, she's at 27.2. That is a monster jump, right? Nobody's even really close to 27.2 right now in the W. Like we're not seeing a ton of like ton of scoring efforts like that, especially at such a consistent level. It's not like she's being floated by 70 point games or anything like that. Like all these games are in that 27 point ballpark. So Obviously, maybe she doesn't need to play 34 minutes a game for Team USA in this type of format. But at the end of the day, she's going to be a big reason why they do blow teams out. And she's going to have to put up points. She's going to have to score. So my only concern with this, Brian, was if Team USA is destroying teams, is it possible that yeah. maybe somebody like in the bench unit kind of comes in and takes over a little bit too much of this role? Or, like, or is it kind of what I said? they're not going to be blowing teams out unless she's putting up points. One book in particular, I think has it right where, okay, if it's not going to be Asia Wilson or Brianna Stewart, the next three players are all guards that can get hot. Sabrina Unescu, Jewel Lloyd, Kelsey Plum. And I yep. feel like that's exactly where I would look all of them at one particular book. Well, two of them at one particular book, Lloyd and Plum plus 1000 each. UNESCO is in that plus 500, 550, plus 600 range, a little bit shorter there. So I'd probably look straight to one of those three, uh, maybe even Plum or Lloyd just for more value. And you yeah. know, if you're going by what we just saw, all three could play pretty significant roles, just what we know. So um, Sabrina UNESCO played uh, 20 something minutes in that game, in the All Star game as well. Jewel Lloyd was, you know, obviously starting <laughs> so yeah. if you look at particularly like how this is going to going to go like and if you want to get um just more value there that's where i would look because of the shooting in particular and the creativity especially for like a jewel lloyd who can just get hers uh and she'll be able to get hers throughout the olympics but it's probably going to be H. wilson <laughs> all that being yeah. said if you want to take yeah. a long shot stab though look at look at one of the guards who can get hot absolutely um, even longer odds like Brittany Griner has done this before, as we mentioned, but plus 1400. I don't think at this stage that that's something that's going to happen. And then when you're going down the line, like it's probably not going to be Diana Taurasi at this stage, it's probably not going to be Alyssa Thomas, who has the longest odds in one particular book at plus 5000. I think even larger than that at another. But that's that's sort of what it is to me. It's Asia Wilson. And if you want to look at long shots, you have to look at, you know, Sabrina Unescu, Kelsey Plum, Jewel Lloyd. Yeah, I think the only thing you could do is, I, based on the way the odds market kind of is, the United States' toughest game might be their first one against Japan, at least in the group. Um, that might be the game that we see Asia really go out there, show out. Um, and at that point, if she builds up a little bit of a lead, if they leave these markets up throughout the tournament, throughout the Olympics, maybe then it's an opportunity to kind of buy somebody else. But at the same time, as the as the tournament progresses, the matchup should get progressively more difficult, meaning that we see more minutes from the top players on each team.
Um, so the, when we the issue, at, the issue, the only issue is like with Japan is because I actually think Belgium could be a tougher matchup just because Japan is small. Fair. China is a different issue. Once we'll get to them in a little bit, Japan is just small. So I think that there's the potential that Asia Wilson just bullies her Dominate. way to actually acquit. She, we could look up and she has 20 in the first half in all likelihood. It could be one of those type of games. Yeah. 100%. So um, looking at Group A, uh, we're going to get our opportunity to talk about China because we have Serbia, Spain, China, and Puerto Rico um, in this bracket. Uh, Brian, when you're looking at this bracket, do you have any best bets that or any teams or any countries that you're looking at uh, for a little bit of value? Yeah, Spain's the favorite to win the group. I kind of like China to win the group at plus 150. They have size they have legitimate size size as much as anybody in this tournament hanzu who i mean in the northeast we know well from new york liberty um was i think fifth and most improved player voting a couple of years ago uh and this year obviously been playing overseas getting ready for this getting ready for the olympics she was very effective in the world cup and i think this team if you're taking this bet you're basically saying hey china could beat spain which i think is realistic um, China also has had a track record for success in international play. They got a silver medal in the World Cup in 2022. The only team they lost to was Team USA, who beat them twice. So I think that this Team USA matchup uh, eventually, if we get there, would be difficult. But China to win the group because otherwise you're looking at Serbia, who hasn't even finalized their roster as of this recording, which is insane. But like, you know, they're just holding out for as long as possible. And then boom, you know, maybe it'll be, you know, some WWE thing where they just like unveil it, like as the tournament's actually starting. I don't know what the hell is going on there. But Serbia is not expected to be higher than the third best team in this group. Puerto Rico, obviously, Puerto Rican, you already know, like we're out here, but we don't have the best team in this tournament. Um, Arela Gurantes is great. Maya Hollingshed is great. But ultimately China is going to be a tough matchup for them. So it's really China or Spain in this group. And I think China, you know, they have better odds in terms of like being plus 150, not being the favorite and having the size that could bother Spain and their creativity and ball movement and things of that nature. China's won at the highest level, getting the silver medal in the World Cup and performing well in international play. I think they have somewhat of a pedigree. They can do this. Yeah. So when you when you're grabbing them at that number, the, I'm going to really kind of pose my what is my best bet to you. Um, when you're looking at this, if you like China to win the group, you obviously have to like them to kind of win a couple games in this group play um, and at least be able to advance out of there. Given mm -hmm. the size that they have and which I think is important, because like if you do end up in a matchup against, say, like a Team USA, do you like China to medal? You can get them at plus three, three, three. Um, and considering if you like them to get out of the group even if they don't win the group right but the, you assume that they get out of the group they should have a decent opportunity to maybe win a game or two end up in at least the third place game and then you're in a situation where you can kind of escalate this or so to speak um and take that as an alternate like line at plus 333 yeah i i think you raise an interesting point in the olympics in general i feel like if you like someone to win the group you should also look at them to medal because it feels kind of dumb saying, I like them to win the group, but I think they're going to lose right when they get to the quarterfinals. You know what I yeah. mean? So, <clears throat> because that's what you're talking about. It's basically like if you're winning the group, you're going two and one or three and oh. That's basically the baseline. From there, you're going into the quarterfinals. You win one more game, you're playing for a medal. You may yep. lose in the semis and, you know, whatever can happen there, but. You basically need to win one more game. You can go three and one essentially in those first four games and you're you're playing for a medal depending on how it shakes out. Yeah. So yes, to answer your question, I think that's a good bet as well. I would I would look at both because again, China, I mean, China swept their group in the last Olympics. China was able to beat Puerto Rico, Australia, and Belgium. And Puerto Rico one was particularly ugly because it was ninety seven fifty five. I remember that one pretty vividly. Ugh. Um that's yeah, <laughs> and then China ended up. Yeah, and then yeah, and then China ended up losing to Serbia, which you know was, uh, for me, it was kind of an upset. And Serbia lost to the United States from there, so that was in the quarters. But I, I don't, I don't think this Serbian team we're expected to see is going to be as good as that one. I think China, uh, and again, 
closer to March Madness than the than the WNBA or NBA playoffs. So we need to factor that in. Like weird shit's going to happen in the Olympics. It may not be in the gold medal game necessarily, but there are going to be upsets along the way. So we take that into account. But I, I think China could take care of Serbia this time around. I, and I, this does lead me into a little bit of a conversation before we get into Group B of why I like to bet to medal as opposed to, at this juncture, winner without the United States. So the, this yes. is a bet that's offered in both the men's bracket and the women's bracket. I think that it's particularly popular in the women's bracket because of the fact that the United States is such a heavy favorite. I don't think that you should be betting – winner without the United States. If you're going to bet winner without the United States, I think that you should either bet like round of elimination and say like they should lose in the finals or you should bet on them to medal because if you end up on the wrong side of the bracket when we get to like the elimination part of the part of the tournament, you're going to be just be cooked. You have you have no out if you have to see the United States in like the I guess it would be like the semifinals or whatever, or like even the quarterfinals, like you're, you're totally cooked. Um, But at least if you're in this, I guess it would be the semifinals. If you're in the semifinals and you lose the United States, you do get another opportunity to third place game because you do get another chance to play. Like you're, you're in a medal game then as long as you make it to the semifinals. Um, If you really like a team to get through to the United States, then I think you almost need, it's kind of tough because we don't know how the bracket's going to unfold. You kind of assume that the United States is going to be the overall number one seed throughout the entire tournament. Um, so what that means is like they're going to have the easiest matchup at basically every juncture based on the pre on the group play rate rankings and the group play results. However, like if you bet winner without, you're basically just giving up odds where you're saying like, well, I'm going to give up this odd, these odds for them to win overall, but they might not be able to even get there if they don't beat the United States, because the only way to get there and it not be the only way to really get there and to win this bet at the same time is to bet like stage of elimination. Uh, and it would be against the United States in the final, because otherwise that means that you beat the United States or somebody else beat the United States, and then maybe you were able to win at the end. So I, it's a long way of saying that those winner without bets are a little bit more deceiving because it's not just like, oh, like who is the one overall number one seed in the regular season where there's a ton of games. You almost have to go through the United States at some point, uh, and I think that there's better ways to do it, like to, to get a medal, basically. I'm in so, full agreement with that. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I haven't particularly targeted those bets either because they, you know, it's like at that point, what you're asked to do is fading Team USA. And to your point, yeah. there's better ways of doing that. Like for the men's uh, buckets episode that we did, we both were like, hey, Europe as a continent at plus 500 is a good way to do that. And, you know, if Serbia is able to beat USA in the group, we could buy back into Team USA later. It's just, you know, it's like we think Team USA is going to win, but minus, minus 400 is kind of outrageous considering how competitive the men's bracket is. And the women's bracket is not quite the same. Like, this is actually closer to what people think the men's bracket is in terms of the separation because as the women's game grows, Team USA is still head and shoulders above everybody else yet. Like, the gap hasn't been closed in that way as it's yeah. getting to that point for the men's. Maybe we'll get there. Like, we'll see how this tournament plays out. Maybe Team USA, uh, the women, does have a couple more close games. But international play, they don't mess around. So that's kind of where we're at with this team. 100%. So let's turn to Group B. Group B obviously has the host nation again. We have France in this group, along with Canada, Nigeria, and Australia. Brian, what do you like for your best bet in this group? I have a couple leans, and I'm going to choose one or the other. I'm going to log it in the app sometime before the tournament. Um, follow us on the Action Network app, by the way. But like, I don't have a definitive play yet. I'm looking at Canada as a, as a potential long shot to win this group. I don't love it necessarily, plus 500 out there on the market. I think there's going to be a better number, though. Uh, that's one reason I'm waiting. And two, I'm not sure if it's going to be Australia or France. Australia is the favorite to win this group, but France is home. And France also has a really good team at plus 130 to win this group. So it's going to be one or the other. I've also given Canada plus 12 and a half versus France in game one a look. But none of those I would call plays at this point. So to me, 
I'm either going home team or long shot in this group if I had to pick one. And I'm sort of like, I'm sort of waiting for something better out there because there are bets uh, out there on the market right now for the women's uh, tournament. Unfortunately, not as many as the men's tournament. And there are still bets that we're waiting on, so to speak, especially when it comes to player props and stat categories and scoring leaders and things of that nature that aren't limited to just TBUSA, for example. So we're going to be looking at that because there's a there's there's someone uh, on the French national team who, you know, Maureen Joannis, who we're familiar with, obviously, for work in the WNBA, who could potentially, potentially lead that team in scoring. Um, but that's not available yet. So that, those are some of the things that I'm sort of monitoring. I'm more, I'm more so just like waiting to see what else pops for Group B. But those are, that's, those are my leans and what I'm sort of waiting for at this point. Yeah, for Group B, we didn't find a ton of value at this juncture, but obviously keep your eyes out. Keep tuning into what we're logging uh, in the Action Network app, what we're putting out on socials. Um, it, there's always going to be some stuff that keeps popping up late, and we are seeing an influx in the offerings that we're getting for the men's tournament. So I think that we should probably be seeing more offerings for the women's tournament as well as we get a little bit closer to, to tip in Game 1. Uh, looking at Group C... This is the group that we know, like we're, we're like, we know what's happening here. It's uh, Germany, the United States, Japan, and Belgium. Uh, Brian and I, we both like this Asia Wilson to lead the United States in scoring bet at plus two, plus 275 or so. Um, Brian, is there anything else that you're looking for in this group? Is there anything else that you're looking for for Team USA to kind of show you, or maybe like if we are able to get like a rebound market, an assist market, is there anybody that maybe you would look at? Obviously, um, the assists or the rebounds can get a little bit more interesting. Uh, Asia has been dominant on the glass in terms of rebounding the basketball throughout this entire season. She's basically building an automatic double double. Um, and for the assists, I think maybe that's a market that gets to be a little bit more interesting based on who's on the roster. Is there anybody that you're maybe looking at saying like, all right, like I could be interested in them for a bet on any of those markets. I would entertain Belgium when they play Japan, taking Belgium on the money line. I would entertain that. I would also entertain uh, Germany having a little bit of upset potential. Um, not uh, not against Team USA, to be clear. <laughs> but, but Germany <laughs> potentially to have some upset potential um, because I think their team is a little bit better than given credit for. But as it relates to Team USA, like props, Chelsea Gray to lead the team in assists. When that drops, whatever that's going to be, um, as long as it's not minus 500 or something along those lines, but I don't think it's going to be. No, Chelsea I doubt Gray it. Has, yeah, Chelsea Gray has to be the first place you look for an assist. And if the number is yeah. good enough, like if I'm getting plus money on that, I'm probably just going to take it. I think um, that's kind of a set it and forget it line. If the All-Star game is any indication, one game sample size, so it's not really an indication, but she did have five assists in 11 minutes. But we know Chelsea Gray, I mean, this is how she diced up the Liberty last year was in the playoffs. I thought she like at one point was looking like the MVP of the finals just because the playmaking is yeah. destroying the Liberty, destroying. And I think her playmaking ability is going to be like, if you like Asia Wilson, like we do to, I mean, who doesn't like Asia Wilson? Like she's a phenomenal yeah. player, but <laughs> <She's awesome. laughs> yeah, she's amazing. But if you like Asia Wilson's lead team USA in scoring, Chelsea Gray is where you got to look for the assists. Like these are teammates, this direct benefit, the pick and roll game is going to be there. There'll be some pick up pop with Brianna Stewart as well. Um, but Chelsea Gray is where I would look for the assists. And for the rebounds, the rebounds are interesting. I, I don't think it's like Asia Wilson, end of story. Like there's a Brianna Stewart case. How much is Alyssa Thomas going to play? How much is Brittany Griner going to play? You know, like that that one's a little more like I, I would want to see what the numbers are for that before. Yeah. Whereas assists, I'm like, I want Chelsea Gray. I just need to know what it is. Uh, so my last question is, because obviously Diana Taurasi is trying to get, I believe it's her sixth gold medal with, with the United States. Do you think there's any juice there with the fact that, you know, like she's been on the team the longest, she has the pedigree, she's going to be there for like another run. Like when we're looking at the men's team, it's, you know, not to make comparisons, but it, I, I think it is important to kind of talk about like the hierarchy of the way the team is structured, right? So like on the men's team, it's like if LeBron wants to play, LeBron's going to play and LeBron's going to start, right? And I think that's one of the things where Tarasi 
she, you know, she still looks great. She's still an all-star. She still is an incredible basketball player, but she only played 20 minutes in the all-star game. Granted, I don't, I don't think, you know, maybe that was a game that they're saying like, well, let's try to limit some of your minutes here. But do you think that it's more of like an even split? For her at like the guard position, you have Joel Lloyd, you have Kelsey Plum, you have Ionescu. Like, how do you, how do you think that this works out for Diana Taurasi? I would be interested in if she's going to start. I'd be interested in Diana Taurasi three's leader if we get that. I'd be interested yeah. in that. Um, I think that's the bulk of where her offense is going to come from. Uh, just playing off of as we mentioned, Chelsea Gray. Uh, on the interior, you have Brianna Stewart and obviously Asia Wilson. Who are going to be roaming around? I think Diana Taurasi is Diana Taurasi is going to have space. Um, she played twenty minutes in the All Star game, and at a quick glance, that was actually fourth highest in minutes, which is interesting. The minutes yeah. distribution there. I don't think that's reflective of like what we're going to see on a regular basis because in the Olympics, like your rotation could really fluctuate, and there are certain it's players. Really not, not yeah, like not your top one or two, but there are certain players like. They're just going to see 18 minutes, one game, 25, the next 30 here, and then 11. Like, it's just, it's, it's different from a game to game basis. And again, closer to March Madness than the uh, playoffs in America, so to speak. But Diana Taurasi, if she's going to start, and if there's any bet you want on her, I would look at three point leader. I think, I think some people may also want her assists. Um, yeah. She'll get some, but I, will she get more than Chelsea Gray? I don't know about that. So it, it's definitely going to be narrow. So a lot of it's probably going to depend on what prices we get. And that's always part of, that should always be part of your consideration when you're betting on these lines. Like what's the price? Because at the end of the day, like that's the thing that really matters the most. What's the price? How do we balance that with the implied odds what, versus what we think is going to happen? Um, so to recap quickly, our best bets for the women's tournament, we both are in agreement on our best bet is Asia Wilson to lead Team USA in scoring at plus 275. In Group A, Brian likes China to win the group at plus 150. I think that you can also sprinkle China, China to medal at plus 333. For Group B, Brian's making some decisions on what to do, uh, but he is looking at Canada at plus 500, France at plus 130, or Canada plus 12.5 versus France maybe in Game 1. And for Group C, again, we like the Asia Wilson to lead the United States in scoring bet. We also are going to be on the lookout for maybe a Chelsea Gray assist leader, maybe a Brianna Stewart rebounds leader type of bet, maybe a Diana Taurasi threes leader bet. Um, and Brian also thinks that there's a little bit of upset potential in this group between Germany and Belgium on a game-to-game -game basis. We'll have to see what those lines come out at. That'll do it for uh, this episode of Buckets presented by BetMGM. Be sure to download the Action Network app and don't forget to check out the Buckets podcast feed for our episode on the men's Olympic teams. For Brian Fonseca, I'm Joe Delera. Thanks for listening. Good luck with all your bets and we'll see you next time.